Hello and welcome to the solution video for spicy question number 12. In this question we are told that y is directly proportional to x. We are also told some y and x values. Now if y is directly proportional to x we can write that y equals kx for some value k which we need to find. In order to find k we'll substitute in the values we've been given. So let's replace the y with 2 root 15 and replace the x with root 10. We can find k by dividing both sides by root 10 so k would equal 2 root 15, divide by root 10. We can simplify this, so first of all let's multiply by root 10 over root 10 to rationalise the denominator. On the top this will give us k equals, we've got 2 root 15 times root 10, so that's 2 root 150. And on the bottom root 10 times root 10 is just 10. Now 2 over 10 will simplify to 1 over 5. And we can also simplify square root 150, that's square root 25 times square root 6 and square root 25 is just 5, so it's 5 root 6. Now the 5s will cancel out, so you're just left with root 6. So y equals root 6, lots of x. We'll now move on to the second statement. It says x is inversely proportional to p, and we're given some values for x and p. So x would equal some constant, which we'll call c this time, divide by p. Let's substitute in the values again to replace x with 4, and then we've got c, divide by p, which we're told is sine 45. Now you should know the value of sine 45, that's square root 2 over 2. And if you divide by a fraction you can multiply by its reciprocal, so we can just multiply this by 2 over root 2, which will give you 2c over root 2. We need to solve this to find c, so if we multiply both sides by root 2, we get 4 root 2 equals 2c, and then divide both sides by 2, then you'll get 2 root 2 equals c, or c equals 2 root 2. So we found the value of c, so we can replace that in the formula, so x equals 2 root 2, divide by p. Now we'll move on to the final statement, it says p is directly proportional to t squared. And we're also given some values for p and t. So p will equal some constant, this time I'll call it n, times t squared. So let's replace the p and the t with the values we're given. So p is 3 plus square root 3, and then we have n times t squared, where t is the square root of tan 60, but it's t squared, so we'll square this. Now when you square a square root, those cancel each other out, so we can just write this as tan 60. And the value of tan 60 is an exact value you should know, that's square root 3. Now if we simply divide both sides by square root 3, we get 3 plus root 3, divide by root 3, equals n. And if we write this the other way around, we'll get n equals 3 plus root 3 over root 3. Once again we've got a third on the bottom and we don't like that so we can rationalise the denominator, multiply by root 3 over root 3. If we do this on the top we get 3 times root 3 which is 3 root 3, and root 3 times by itself which is just 3. And on the bottom root 3 times by itself again is just 3. There's now a common factor of 3 that we can cancel out, so we just end up with square root 3 plus 1. We can now replace the n in the formula with square root 3 plus 1, like this. Next we're told to find y when t equals the square root of 3 minus 1. What we'll do is substitute the t value into this formula here. So we find that p equals root 3 plus 1 times t squared, but we know t is root 3 minus 1, so we'll write that in a bracket, squared. If you square a bracket you times it by itself, so we've just got this bracket twice. Now we can expand these brackets, we'll start with the first two here. So root 3 times root 3 is 3, root 3 times negative 1 is negative root 3, 1 times root 3 is root 3, and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. This will simplify because the square root 3s here will cancel, so you just get 3 take away 1, which is 2. We then multiply this by the second bracket, root 3 minus 1. If you expand this you do 2 times root 3, which is 2 root 3, and 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So, when t equals root 3 minus 1, p would equal 2 root 3 minus 2. We can now substitute this p-value into the formula for x. So, x equals 2 root 2 divided by p, so it's 2 root 2, divided by this p-value, 2 root 3 minus 2. We can rationalise the denominator here again. We multiply by 2 root 3 plus 2 over 2 root 3 plus 2. On the top, we do 2 root 2 times 2 root 3, which is 4 root 6, and 2 root 2 times 2, which is 4 root 2. On the bottom we are expanding a double bracket, so 2 root 3 times 2 root 3, 
gives you 2 times 2 which is 4, and root 3 times by itself is 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. We then do 2 root 3 times 2, so 4 root 3, negative 2 times 2 root 3 which is negative 4 root 3, and negative 2 times 2 which is negative 4. On the bottom here you'll see these 4 root 3's will cancel, so we get 12 take away 4, which is 8, and now there's a common factor of 4 that we can cancel out, which would leave us with x equals root 6 plus root 2 over 2. Now we're almost there, so we have the value of x, if we substitute that into the top formula we'll get the value for y. So y equals root 6 times by x, so on the top we've got root 6 times root 6, which is 6, and then root 6 times root 2, which is root 12. Now root 12 will simplify, it's root 4 times root 3, which is 2 root 3. There's now a common factor of 2 to simplify, so if we cancel those out, we end up with y equals 3 plus root 3, which is the answer to the question. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.